Man. Lucky to be here. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> Forgot the matches. Hey everybody. Welcome to the Mojave Patrol's Epicurean Trail. Got a few things going on tonight. Uh, stay tuned for the trailer. Hope you like it. Don't know what it's going to be like normal. Might be different. Might be the same. Oop. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what evil lurks in the minds of men? The shadow knows. Whoa! Oh! 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Well, he does. Hey. Stay tuned for the trailer. Welcome back. I know it's super short notice and I apologize for that, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, I gotta do so I gotta get some better lighting somehow. But anyway, um Well let's get started. Where's my knife? What do we got tonight? Yeah. Yeah, this is an old Cutmaster from the 1940s. Maybe the late 30s, early 40s. It's a stockman's knife. It's got three blades. This uh, sheep's foot has been broken, so I'm going to reprofile it at some point. Curve it around and resharpen it. But it's... Plenty good enough for what we're going to use it for tonight. And, uh, yeah, vintage blade. I've got uh, Victor Sinclair factory overruns. These are torpedoes. I asked for Maduro, but I don't think I got them. So without further ado, let's pop these open. And I'm pulling one from the middle because that'll be the freshest. Once again, Victor Sinclair factory overruns. See those? these other way. I had them delivered uh, especially all the way from Rum to Do in Denweeden. Nice country Denweeden. It's, uh, it's a uh, matriarchal ogliarchy. Ooh, that is sharp. 
So I'm going to trim the end of the torpedo here. See that little nub sticking up? That pulls out and leaves a little hole for drawing. Still a little. Should be okay. Maybe I can pierce it a little bit. better. Old Red's here. How you doing, Red? Have a uh, vintage whiskey glass from the 1950s. It's part of a set. Unfortunately, this is the sole survivor. But what better to check tonight's beverage than a vintage whistle, uh, whiskey glass, uh, Whistle Pig. Whistle Pig's piggyback, 100% rye, 96.56% proof. That should have a good Kentucky hug, six years old. And to chase the cigar, nothing, nothing but grape Kool-Aid. Mm, that is good. Let's get crack a with this uh, cigar. I heard an old cigar saying, a woman is just a woman, but a good cigar is a smoke. And this is a good smoke. I think that was from about 1910. I'm going to try to find out some of these old cigar type sayings. And um, every time I, I do a review like this, I'll, I'll say it. The cigar was crap, and as a matter of fact, every Victor cigar I've had out of the pack has been pretty crappy. The first one I took out of the center was the freshest, but it was also the dry one. Of the, it was dry, so as we get towards the edge of the pack, they got worse and worse. I'm trying to rehydrate them now. We'll see if that's even possible. Um, I talked to a guy at a cigar store, and he seems to think it is possible. So we're giving that a whirl. Excuse the way I look. I was out working on the car. And uh, I just came in to cool off for a few minutes and um, put that, uh, um, uh, put this uh, thought on, on film. Um, they canoed, which is where you're smoking a cigar, and it burns in this funny way that the bottom part or the top part doesn't burn. You have to constantly apply flame to it to keep it um, uh, even all the way around. And, um, <laughs> well, let's put it this way. It was crap. So uh, let's get on with the video. That is nice and mild. 
I don't know uh, how mild it's going to be when we're down this far. We'll see, but uh, this is a good cigar. Okay. Let's kick this pig. Ten points for anybody who can uh, tell me what movie that is from. Oh, yeah. Make sure we hit the trash can. Oh, can you effing believe that? I'll be right back. Whew! That was, uh, that tires you out. That tires you out. Okay, so I went in to get the OB so we can get this uh, cork out wow wow for an expensive cigar that cigar go oh! for an expensive uh, whiskey that should not have happened. Very disappointed with that. We're expecting thunder and lightning tonight. And since I love thunder and lightning, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath. Mmm, mmm. That's sort of a caramel smell. Okay. What do we got here? Straight rye whiskey. Whistle pig, 100% rye. Piggyback rye. Here's to the piggyback rye you all deserve. Classic, spicy, and spontaneous. Spontaneous? Maybe it'll surprise me. Age six years. Pot distilled. Age six years at American Oak Barrels. Together we ride. And with that phrase, we're going to pour us a healthy dollop. Take it back. Calm down, calm down. Your, your little brother's not doing that. Calm down. That is, uh, that's going to be strong. Over the lips, past the gums, look out the stomach, here it comes. <coughs> oh. We'll take much of this. It's got a nice, even flavor. It is kind of spicy. It's got a long Kentucky hug. 
it's uh, not as strong of a hug as others. Um, but it is a strong one. That is a good sipping whiskey. Goes good with a cigar. Oh, man. Yeah, I think old uh, Bill is only going to need one hit of this stuff tonight. Let me stick that back in. Holy spumoni. Let's see what's going on in the world. We got a lot going on because of the fires. Now the fires are uh, works better this way. We have a uh, ooh. That's a nice whiskey. This apparently is a replay of the 9-11 uh, attack. Um, EMS response. Um, I forgot it was on tonight. Uh, we're just going to let this uh, wait until um, I'm done with this. So yeah, 9-11, this is 9-11 I'm doing this on. And it was 21 years ago today that uh, terrorist airplanes uh, took down the Twin Towers and um, an airplane crashed into the Pentagon. And an air crash, uh, airplane crash in Philadelphia. Um, I worked with a very fine young woman when I worked for this hair care company. And I'm not going to say her name. But if she's ever watching this, you're going to know who you are. And her brother was a uh, Pennsylvania um, state trooper. And he was the first man on that crash scene. Well, that airliner nosedived um, into the ground. 
So, uh, if you're watching this, it's for you. Let's roll. That's good stuff, man. You know what? I might, I lied. I might have a second one. Anyway. It stopped raining. It is quite warm out here. It has got to be uh, like 80 degrees. What is it? It is almost 80 degrees. And I bet you, it's, well, it's 100% humidity because, you know, it's raining. Uh, the humidity thing is off the scale. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty humid. Yeah, so today's the anniversary of 911, and I hope um, I'm from New York, and I hope we remember the people that perished on this day, especially all the first responders whose job was to go in there and get them and bring them up. You know, there's some places on Earth that if a disaster of that proportion took place, the first responders wouldn't hesitate to run home. I don't know what countries though are they are, though I have my suspicions. Well, actually, I do know what countries they are because I've read stories about it happening. But I'm not going to name countries, you know. People have their own reasons for doing crap. I love the rain. I love the rain more than just about anything. Rain and wind and chilly weather and thunder and lightning and man that that makes you feel like you're alive you're you're right there it's all fine to sit inside your nice comfy house warm and toasty but there's something about being out in the elements that makes you feel alive that's why I, I rarely personally owned easy to drive vehicles it's the challenge of operating uh, something that's difficult to operate. Like, uh, I know people drive Model Ts. Because they're the smoothest running, most comfortable vehicle in the world? No. Because they're loud, noisy, difficult to operate, and uncomfortable and frightening to drive. Because I've ridden in one. And I loved it. I loved it. It's the ability to be in control of your environment. You're not letting the computer drive your car. You're not you're not letting the AC waft over your face and your skin in luxurious comfort while you're watching Harry Potter, while your car zips in and out between the laden semis. Yes, in the middle of the night. Uh, um, that's not what it's about. It may be cool and fun, but man. Driving across the open desert at 1 o'clock in the morning when it's 36 degrees outside in a 1950 Ford pickup with a top speed of about 45 miles an hour with ice cold wind blowing in the window and you're all bundled up sitting there smoking a cigar. Sure in the knowledge that you are in control of the entire situation. That is living. And anybody out there who's been a fighter pilot or driven an armored vehicle or been in any kind of combat situation, you, you're going to understand what I mean. You will. You will. People who've never been in those situations, um, they don't truly understand. They don't truly understand. They may say they do, but they, they really don't. Well, I've been droning on long enough. I'm gonna have a little touch, a little, a little touch. I'm gonna have a little touch. Yes, I am. Here we go. But that's fine. That's fine. Sharon, it's the best I've ever had. Whistle pig, piggyback. 96.56% or 96 96.56 proof. Aged in the oak barrel six years. 
and I'm taking the ride with them. And um, I just wrapped up an Epicurean Trail video about going to a restaurant uh, up in Cabarillo. Um, I'll be posting that Saturday at 7.30 a.m., so make sure you watch it. Uh, this one will probably come after that. And um, after that, uh, when I get some more footage, there's going to be a major Packard update. Um, I've kind of teased about what's going on with the Packard. I don't think I've really shown anything. I have to check back in the other videos, but I don't think I have. And I'm very happy with the progress I'm making. And uh, when you hear the Packard commercial, ask the man who owns one. I own one. And I am exceptionally pleased. Oh, sure. Once again, there's some sketchy engineering that went into building this thing. But, but, I like it. And most of all, totally shocking me is that my wife likes it. So, there's a car show coming up October 2nd. I'm really going to try hard to be able to get it there. And um, we'll see how that works. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, don't forget to click uh, subscribe and like and uh, click the little bell to get all my notifications. And I know only six or eight people are going to watch this, but hey, that's six or eight people more you know than I had at the beginning and I want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel I'm still working on a few things so that's going to take a little time so you know just hang in there um, I gotta to talk to my buddy and um, once again thanks for joining me on this episode of Mojave Patrol's Epicurean Trail Whistle Pig Piggyback Review and it's good I buy it. I buy it again. <laughs> oh, uh, P.S. Long live the king, King Charles the Third. Queen Elizabeth uh, was the one of the few surviving uh, royals from the Second World War. So, that's for you, Queen Elizabeth. So, uh, that's it. Yes, look to Packard for the easiest handling car ever built. America's new choice in the fine car field.